Are we going back to our family tribe? Are it's we a... gonna murder everybody in this room? Um... <laughs> That's fair. I thought it was gonna be spookier, but you know what? Let's just go with it. Oh yeah, hold the tower session. Yay! Alright. Entering into this area, you began to learn and understand what you had to endeavor to explore and to reach new heights. You had learned about the kings and the betrayal of one another, and putting into this situation all your own. Then you learned about ghosts hidden within the passageways between the corridors of the school. After eight, students are no longer allowed to enter into the domain, the area, or the dorms. However, you took it upon yourselves to go ghost hunting, to catch some ghost, and enter into what Nesmin is calling Lavender Town. So, after a long rest in the fateful night, your team reconvened, entering into this area. Ramon and Claire made the appropriate necessities to allow you strangers to enter into the school. And before you go, you meet up for one last time. Maybe the final time, if you yourselves become ghosts in turn. That was a little too epic music, so let's just go with something called Apprehension. Two new character sheets in our journals. Uh, yes. Okay. That's foreboding. As nothing has happened on them, it doesn't really matter. I called your character sheet. <laughs> yeah, sure. Ramon then states, Uh, well now. Glad you could catch back up with us. So everything is set and everything is settled. Without too much issue, we managed to get you all affiliated with the school. You are allowed to enter after the promised time and you are able to, if possible, get rid of the situation at hand. There is no wild evidence, just mere speculation and the hauntings and disturbed marks and sounds that people hear at night. Janitors in the morning have to clean up a few messes of blood, scrapes, and paint chipped off the roofs. There have been rumors of music being played in the school, and not only that, but books and the like being thrown and tossed around. So watch out for the poster guy's activity. He then tosses each of you a bag, a uh, leather tome size, or at least the size of a backpack. Uh, these, this equipment should at least help you, but try not to use it too much, as I'm not exactly sure what it actually does. The first time I had an interaction with the Phantom, it didn't exactly go well. Phantom. Tinny Phantom. Oh, uh, what's inside the bag, Dogma? As you open the bag, it does appear to be some strange contraption and the like. It is odd, but you are able to have what's known as an EM meter, a night vision goggles that are technically dark vision goggles, and what appears to be a vacuum cleaner, but hand-sized. You're giving us vacuum cleaners to deal with ghosts? Uh, sort of. The vacuum cleaners themselves have been modified to extend and somehow house a phantasmal image or a spiritual being. In theory, we haven't exactly tested them out yet. Hmm. Right. Okay. So are we dealing with just spirits, or are there demons involved? No idea. Um, Alice might have more information. Looking towards his daughter that really should be sleeping. Uh, she then goes, uh, From what we heard, a lot of rumors have been going around. A lot of rumors. I don't exactly know if they're true or not. But from what I can tell, people have been hurt if they ever stay past eight. So going now might be the best time for you. Beyond that though, you also have to be careful. There are the dorms, the resting areas people hang out with, and because this is a uh, advanced learning area, there are also places where you can sleep, eat, drink, and lodge. So there's not just um, 
regular things that you would find in normal school. Uh, I look over to Nesman to see how he's coping with this. He's worried. Probably. No, he is very excited. Okay, besides the kids being in trouble, he seems excited. Oh no. Archer tries <laughs> to turn on whatever contraption this is. Uh, you turn it on because you have a physical form. It begins to hurt you as it begins to wrap around you, surrounding you with a air-like structure and form, currently trying to compress your very body. Do you let it continue? Uh... Curious. Yes. Eamon walks over and turns off the vacuum. Before you get a chance to do so, the vacuum had enough time to compress his body even further. You take, since you didn't leave it on that long, just 1d4. You take 2 damage. Ouch. I can take it. <laughs> I, I, I turn towards Nasmin and Maxi. Is he always this bright? Mm -hmm. well, I'm gonna get a shrug from Desmond. Acho? You probably... The thing is supposed to kill creatures. You don't want to be in front of that. Contained, but yes. Archer gives a thumbs up. Aemon face bombs and starts walking back towards... Uh, so, Ramon, what, um... What restrictions are there as to where we can and can't go? You can't enter into the tower in the middle of the section. Other than that, you have been cleared to enter into any laboratories, any uh, study halls, the library, the garden, and the like. Wait, why can't we enter the tower? The tower itself is housed for uh, teachers and the like, those advanced with the m structures of magic. It has secrets guarded by the school, so it's off limits. And why do I have the feeling that it's gonna one of those secrets is gonna be those ghosts? Archer has never looked excited, but if it, if he could smile beneath that mask, there'd be a. <laughs> what are we waiting for? Is Let's go. Void, is it not the void smiling at us? <laughs> the void can only devour. It can't show expressions, unfortunately. Uh, he does state not only that, but the actual area itself is in another dimension. So, if it was responsible, somehow the entire area would have to envelop that dimension as well. Maybe that's how they die. But we shall see. Um, oh, they're coming for you. <laughs> Run! I'm just giving you a warning uh, to stay out of there. It's mainly for uh, safeguard purposes, but if you decide to go, it'll be of your own volition. Okay. Quick question. Yes. Uh, Ramon, can I deposit a weapon for, like, later? Uh, what do you mean? I take out my bastard sword. Uh, so, like, I'm, I, I've come back for it. So, like, I would like to put this in, like, you know, the item repository area. Of course. We can so, like, if someone here. else needs to use it, they can just, you know, borrow it. Simple enough, we'll have it registered into the item inquiry and allow it to be accessed. Alright, thanks. Not at all. You do also have to be careful. The area of the school is placed in a safeguard lock system. So in case you try to destroy the school too much, it will likely throw you into a new sectioned area. In case you're in oh, danger or in case you try to create too much damage. It'll try to safeguard you and throw you into a new section. Yeah, and looking at how people have died, I don't think it really works. Again, no one has died yet, but people have been injured and hurt. Hmm. It's why they allowed you to enter into the school. Yeah. To use to say, it doesn't throw whatever hurts them into... 
one of these areas. It may be phantoms, but they may also still be bound by the rules of the school. Well, Zonk Scoop, how are we going to figure out these ghosts? Well, just walk in there and kill everything we see. What, what more is there to be? And if it's already dead, even better. Isn't that kind of the opposite of what we've just been told? If we start killing things, won't the school turn on us? No, once you destroy property of the school enough, it will throw you into a new room. Not harming you, but tossing you out. It From the security system he's describing, it's to make sure you aren't harmed. Because the structure of the school itself indicates harm on itself as danger to someone or something inside the area. Archer shotguns that uh, vacuum cleaner. Let's go. And our Eamon will say, okay, so apparently this is a thing. You will pull out the helmets. Can this also go in storage? Of course. Because I don't think at the moment any of us have real need for a creepy sounding helmet that doesn't fit half of us. Sorry. I haven't tried it on yet. Kind of redundant having two masks on. Yeah, <laughs> let, let's just call it that, yes. Uh, at any rate, please be careful and please be advised of the security in the area. There might not be anyone there, but at the same time, we can't not expect stragglers. Ah. What? So kill, kill anything inside will not work then. Shit. Well, these are captured utensils, so... It's probably better off to just, you know, trying to capture them. Yeah, sure. Let's vacuum, vacuum everything. I meant students just randomly entering in and not leaving when they're supposed to. If we do see a student, we'll probably have to escort them out, right? Or yeah. if they listen to you. You're all adults. Yeah. I'm sure some of the younger students will at least listen to what you say. Students and listening to sensible people. Oh, I'm walking in at this point. Let's get going. Alright. What else do I want to acquisition here? I'm going to leave behind my spear. Not a magic spear, it's just a spear. Alright. Entering into the school grounds, you begin to see a structured wall, a structured floor. You then see a tower adjacent to it, growing into the distance, into the horizon. And as the sun has already set, you still feel an eerie mood. As buildings around it surround the area, encased within is the haunted forms of many things, or of nothing, as rumors do often spread within student areas. But one thing is certain, something will be found, whether a ghost, a phantom, or a secret meant to be kept. Something will indeed be found. Do you want to talk about that that, 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 uh, that building having a wizard hat? No. Okay, just checking. <clears throat> Put on my goggles. Yeah, I'll do the same. I'll do the same. Because why not? <laughs> I mean, I don't have dark vision, so I kind of need it. Question, do the goggles fit over my glasses? <laughs> they do. Okay. They're the stereotypical as well. uh, night vision goggles that are, like, ridiculously big and practically cover the entire half portion of your face. Oh, God. So, so they're like good old-fashioned welding goggles. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, quick question, guys. So, do we have a plan for ca for how we're gonna divide and conquer, or are we just gonna split up and look for clues, gang? Let's not split up. Okay, so Nesbitt and Mixie, you two go together. <laughs> sure, I'll go with next man and Mixie. Y you can go alone, Archer, if you really want to. I nod.
Right. So you say they're like night vision goggles. <laughs> Can I step away from everyone and just um it just cast light in front of me quickly to see if it blinds me. <laughs> oh no. Go ahead and roll sleight of hand. Everyone else can roll perception. Uh, oh wait, uh, it would be your passive perception because you're trying to do it in... <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone saw that. For Mari... to close my eyes? Sure, you just blinked at that instance. Everyone else's passive probably beats a six. Nesbin, you were blinded for about three seconds, so one round of combat. I'll dismiss the light. Amen. At least my theory has been tested correct. As you enter yes. into the area, you do see some strange thing go through the corridor and enter into the right side of the building. You're not sure what it was, though. It was fast and moving at a great speed. Guys... I saw something. We need to start moving. It didn't face through a wall, more like darted across the alleyway. Okay. Gotta get running then. Okay, so I run up to there. You said he was moving like yonder, right? Correct. No, no vision of him? No vision of them. At this point, you would have to purposefully look for them with a past perception would not work okay so would that be perception or investigation this one would be perception as you're not investigating the grounds more as looking for someone or something even better as you gaze in the area you do see someone in this building <laughs> Well, you're not sure who it is or what it is, you do see them peering back to you. In the distance, you do see a form. Less than the height of the window that they're carrying, peering at, but they are eyeing your group. Maybe not aware that you're eyeing them back. Do I see any doors in the building on this side, or...? You do. Okay. There's also the open window. Okay. Eamon is gonna turn around, make it look like he's talking to Archer, and just walk backwards towards the door. In a slow and calm fashion. Alright. Are you mouthing a plan or are you just walking backwards? Guys, I think. Yep. Guys, I, I think there are people in here. We should take a look. So maybe I am going to open this door. They're going to jump out of that window and you guys tackle them, okay? We're going to tackle a ghost. How fast can I move? Because I want to knock at the window. <laughs> you can move pretty quickly. How f much movement is it? You can bonus Aww. action, Tash. I mean, knocking at a window is a free action. You can bonus action and action, Dash. For fuck's sake. I'm going to the window if I now. see Mexi going YOLO, I'll just open the door. All right. I'm just knocking on the window and just going, hello! As you knock on the window and startle everyone else, Iman just opens the door. And then you see this. Ah! Ah! Va vacuum cleaner out, pointing towards Millie and... What are you doing here? Oh! <laughs> um... What are you doing here? This is my school. The real question is, how'd you get here before us? Yes. Didn't we just talk with your dad about not being here because we were going to kill everything on sight. Uh huh. This is only a dream. It, hold on, insight. Only a dream. Go ahead. Cause like, I don't think this. I don't think that's the two of them. Yeah, that. <laughs> just so you know, pulls out the bandor. I'm gonna dash over. 
I <laughs> try and grab the two by the scruffs of their necks, like the collars. You do so. They're about your height as well. Um, you can easily grab them, and Ivan, you can tell this is not a dream. You can also tell that Alice is a pretty bad liar from what you remember. And Millie's just standing there mimicking her movements. It's them. Archer, I don't know. This does seem sus suspicious. The light in Archer's mask squints as he pulls out the vacuum. Plate. Nothing happens. They're not drawn in towards it. So they're physical. Yeah. At the very least. You hear then Alice just struggling and then just give up. <sighs> okay. What's behind door number two, please? <laughs> as you open this... I'm all okay. down for door number one, personally. Yeah, even this is gonna give those two a, a good old-fashioned yelling. Because that's what they require. <laughs> uh, <sighs> okay. As Mixie begins to hold the people, children... Uh, or phantoms for some of you. The rest of the group then decides to venture forth and see what's going on. Archer, as you open the first door, you then see nothing inside. As you turn on your uh, night vision goggles, you still see nothing inside. Do you wander in or investigate the area further? I'll investigate. All right. Investigating the area, you do find a strange study plan set up upon the board. And you, all find, you also find a sandwich on the side of one of the desks. Alright, sandwich in inventory. Oh no. I'm taking that sandwich. <laughs> Nesman, as I'm you enter... I'm taking that damn sandwich. Sorry. As you enter inside, <laughs> you see a classroom. A typical classroom with a teacher, students... You know, but they're all creepy shadow things with light emanating around them. <laughs> I think I chose the right classroom, personally. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna lean my head out and say, guys, lessons on. Is there actually a, is there actually a class a class going on in there? It I'm out here with the sandwich. It appears to be, at least to Nesman. They are speaking <laughs> a strange primordial language. As in the primordial language, unless you know it, you have no idea what lesson they're talking about. The dogma, I got this. Oh boy, <laughs> Archer! As you, round... I'm gonna take a seat. <laughs> as you round the corner, you hear uh, the teacher state in a loud, monotone voice, "Ah, glad to see finally one of the students showed up that didn't show. Great! Now we'll continue on with the necromancy class 101." Unfortunately, the lock inside the laboratory is closed, so we can't exactly enter inside. Now repeat after me the incantation for bodily harm and injury towards uh. another. They then begin... Um, teacher. Oh, great, another tardy. Well, please write down your name in the clipboard it's adjacent to my desk and then have a seat. Teacher, I have a really important question. <sighs> I signed up for baking class. Why am I in Necromancy 101? <laughs> baking class is next door in the cafeteria. Okay, but then on my class schedule, it tells me to be here in Necromancy 101. Is that a typo or should I actually be? I might be proficient in Necromancy. I don't know, teacher. I think I should take an aptitude test personally. These poor fucking ghosts. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> It even pulls out the vacuum cleaner. I write my I write Archer in the in the book. <laughs> As you begin to pull out the vacuum cleaner, you see the teacher slowly being drawn towards you. But you see the first student in the front goes, Someone's trying to harm the teacher. The next person goes, Quickly kill them before they harm the teacher. <laughs> and the rest of the go mindlessly attacking. <laughs> Everyone rolls. <laughs> <laughs> and Aiden doesn't understand this. <laughs> Can I say no. one thing before they decide, before they completely decide to attack? I would like to say in Primordial, let's do a petition. <laughs> <sighs> the freaking vacuum cleaner. Meanwhile, Mixie's dragging the two fucking kids to the door. <laughs> 
<laughs> we only need three people for this Am plan. Am I the only responsible adult here? No, no, I I gave them a proper scolding. I'm doing our job. And this means trying to learn. <laughs> Nesbin can't even understand what's being taught. I mean, we I all have areas we can want. improve ourselves in. <laughs> One of them is apparently primordial. Hey, you got at least you know it's necromancy 101. No? So I'd just be grateful it's not one of my other characters who would have just walked out, got the vacuum ready, kicked down the door, and just gone in guns blazing. Day is fault indeed. Mixie. Day is fault. You just skull the two, and they head out the door, taking no action against you. Wait, no, I'm gonna follow them to make sure that they actually go out the school. Um, go ahead and roll dexterity saving throw. They uh -oh. never intended to leave. Uh -oh. <laughs> and you trip down in the window. You're a halfling, so you get to roll again, I think. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, lucky. Yeah, you're lucky. Freaking halflings. Not lucky enough, as Millie and Alice both face step out of your area. We'll see you <sighs> later! And then Alice <laughs> forgot to do it, and then steps away. Go home! <laughs> God damn it. What do you do um, after? Uh, I'm just walking over to the door just to see what's going on. Alright. You see people currently heading towards Nesmin, Archer, and Eamon. Host you can tell their body language is hostile. I'm stepping out the door. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to look at the ghosts and I was just like, yeah, no, fuck you. All right, Nesbin. I'm studying the board intently. I'm trying to make heads or tails of this, and I'm writing down notes in one of my many books. I'm mostly just copying and sort of like copy pastoring it. Copy pastoring. Copy yeah, copy pasta. Pasta. At, least, at least he's not copy pastoring it. As you copy pasta it, you begin to realize that it is written in the language you don't speak, known as primordial. You can get ready to translate it later on, but at the moment you are unable to read it. But you do know schools have libraries. <sighs> <laughs> Anything I'm, else? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit here writing notes. <laughs> Alright. Rip. Amen. Okay, I am gonna move closer to to the home teacher apparently, and I'm gonna turn on the vacuum cleaner even more intensely. All right, they are spiritual creatures, and you turned on the vacuum, so that's three d six. If tent vacuuming occurs, <laughs> you see the structured form begin to slowly be in, not intake. You slowly see the creature being slowly vacuumed inside, but it is still partially outside. It is immobile, though. Oh, it's immobile as long as I'm standing there, right? Or, I can, think, maybe. Uh, let's put it this way. It's currently attached to you, can make an attack still, but cannot move unless you yourself move. Okay. I, I am gonna use my bonus action to inspire... Mixie, I have faith in Mixie. Mixie, I need help! Ah, and Ava just gotta start walking back. <laughs> okay. But apparently a ghost in two. Mixie, you see half of a... The head of a ghost currently just outside of the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> help. It's saying something primordial. Do you speak it? Uh, I'm gonna say no. That's fine, no. Archer. Yeah. You hear in the corner because you're it's yelling it this out loud as it gets thrown out of the room. Students, don't forget to do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> I look at Nesbitt. Teachers are so innocent. Half the group then. Rushes over straight towards Eamon, giving Nesbin a chance of, of attack of opportunity. 
all yelling out, Teacher! We left our pencils at home! This <laughs> <laughs> means a pacifist. <laughs> I can't hurt them. They've done nothing wrong. They were here to learn. As Eamon did, you don't know that for sure. As Eamon did do harm towards the teacher, it will take a bite attack at you. Does a twenty-three hit? No, it does not. Twenty-two would have hit too. Wow! No, really? say it, no, it, 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 it was a joke. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna go. Dang! I got really confused because the twenty-three is higher than the twenty-two. That that was the joke. <laughs> yeah, that was the joke. That's what confused me. You only take two plus strength, so you only take four damage. Okay. The next group of students then charges straight towards the door. No! Alright, the last two are delinquents. The next two rush straight towards the board and begin to wipe away this lesson. Maybe if the lesson isn't there anymore, they'll be able to get out of homework. And the last <laughs> two just jump out the window. We're already dead, so it's okay! But the petition... But they should. They just yell out, "No one cares." <laughs> Archer. All right, that's, I I say in promoter. All right, that's it. I was gonna play nice, but now someone told me they didn't care. So fuck the school, fuck these teachers, and fuck you. I turn on my vacuum cleaner at this guy. All right, that's three d six against a student. Maybe I do care. I don't know. That was really low damage. The students are weaker, but they have an HP of at least 8. So again, half of its head is currently buried inside the vacuum cleaner. Nice. And I'm gonna just move over here. That's my turn. So the ghost goes with Mixie. Uh, I caught me. Surprise! <laughs> Take out the vacuum cleaner. And start vacuuming up the teacher. Alright, because you now know the extended rules, vacuum cleaners do an automatic 3d6 to ghost enemies, but you first have to target one. Yeah, I'm targeting uh, the teacher just to get rid of her. Oh, that would automatically take her out. She's ripped asunder, half in yours and half in Eamon's. You see all the students go into a frenzy, the ones remaining, and turn into a red-toned hue, as if angered. Bonus action disengage. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Nesman. Nesman. They, how dare they clean your chalkboard, Nesman? Oh, you racks. Uh, oh, sorry, I was talking to someone. Your turn. Oof. Your turn. <sighs> the delinquents clean the board. No, the, the delinquents GTF don't. Two of the yeah, delinquents left out. the board, and the other two, not delinquents, but not model students, uh, clean the board, making sure. Uh... <sighs> I was learning. Slams fists on desk. Uh, go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw. Maybe you can remember the rest of it before they wiped it all out. Yeah, that's good enough. You were able to memorize the last bit of it, uh, the last corner, uh, before it was wiped clean. So you just quickly write it down. Yes. But after Mixie ripped asunder the teacher, you can tell that these phantoms are now angry towards any living creature. <gasps> we'll back up. Ah, I'll get the vacuum out just in case one of them comes near me. <laughs> Amen. Okay. 
Eamon will walk towards the door. Turn the vacuum cleaner to the one down here. Alright, you can now roll 3d6. Or if you want me to do it, I can do it. That's 8. It quickly gets wiped out in an instant. And Mixie sees Eamon making a couple of flick flacks and just flying backwards. I will tumble away as a bonus action. That will be my turn. Alright. The phantasmal creatures then make a decision. Two of them run straight towards Eamon, phasing through the building. Oh, right, they can phase, so they don't have to go around the chairs. And one of them rushes straight towards Nesman. <laughs> oh, don't no, follow up, I just wanted to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Nesman, go ahead and make a 3D6 check. Because you did say you have your vacuum out. I accidental vacuuming. You managed right. to wipe most of it out, but with one hit point remaining, it bites at you for a 17. Does it hit? Uh, yes. All right, that's 1d6 plus dex. Oh, not dex, strength. So that's five total HP taken out. Archer, one of them bites at you. 16, does it hit? Yes. Just hits. Oh, sorry, Archer. <laughs> you, you take four points of damage. What, what type of damage? It'd be strength, so I guess force? Okay. May the fort be with you. Alright, the creatures then burrow straight towards Eamon. One of them gets closer, allowing it to attack. 14 and 18. Oh, 14 misses. 18 hits. Alright. Oh, I didn't hit that well. Uh, you take two points of damage. <laughs> they yell something, but you can't understand Primordial. And Archer's no longer far close enough to waste, so I can't make jokes. Archer. Feels bad. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna uh, use my vacuum and uh, on the ghost. Oh, damn it! I whispered it. It was. It would have been funny if it wasn't. <sighs> <laughs> All right, you completely clean up as it just disappears. Jinkies. Um, I start running. Mixie. Uh, I'll move forward and vacuum this one up. All right. 3d6. Two <laughs> crits. That, that's overkill. You completely wipe it out. Without a hint or edge of remorse, I assume. Yeah, she's just kind of bored. <laughs> These are pretty weak. <laughs> uh, he is tied to their initiative, so I'm going to say you vacuum up the other one. All right, Nesman. Uh, can I stop hoovering him up and point to the window and just tell him to be free? Uh, roll persuasion. Just run. Wait, does he understand you? Is the question. I mean, you haven't tried yet. Thirteen. All right. They have a zero in persuasion, so it all matters on this roll. <laughs> it begins to say something primordial and then Archer, because you're there I can actually make the joke oh, okay, so it's like summer break and the next teacher will come up in like two weeks got it and then it just joins the delinquents outside hey guys, it's wait up, break. it's summer break it's summer break's not two weeks long <laughs> I have to go to summer school oh, okay 
you. <laughs> Amen. Time, time to crank up the hose. And we vacuum up the other one. Yeah, this is the last student. You manage to grab onto the phantom and it whips inside without a care in the world. And then we will run towards the door. Guys, did you get the rest of them? Three of them went out the window. <sighs> Fubble. Look, they just wanted to learn. You don't have to ghosts. go attack them like that. They're ghosts. But we're here for the bad ones. These ones weren't hurting anyone. We're here for ghosts in general. We agree that this. At we're here for the bad ones. How we're here you... because people have been hurt. If these ones aren't hurting people, they're good in my eyes. I want to open up the canteen door. As you open the canteen door, you do hear some strange voices inside. Maybe not phantoms, but definitely some strange voices inside. Do you have your night vision goggles on? Yep. Alright. As you enter inside, you see some person behind the counter, about the same size as you, simply just grabbing some snacks and begins to munch on them. And then you see someone taller than her come back up from the ground and simply states, Hey, you gotta be quiet. They might hear us, Ashley. Okay. But are, do you really think there's ghosts here? No, that's probably just a myth. <laughs> I'm going to sneak over to them. <laughs> All right. Would it be advantage because it's dark? Um, sure. They're just students trained in magic, so they wouldn't have. <laughs> Wrong, Aston. Uh, you continue forwards, so... and Ashley states to the other one. Um, so are you sure there's no ghost, Kim? Yeah, I'm positive. Just keep looking for anything you can find. I want to sneak up behind them, and I want to grab both of their shoulders and just go BOO! Raw constitution saving throw? <laughs> As the ghost behind me does the same. <laughs> RIP. You get two ear-piercing cries, causing you to be stunned for a round. But because it's in combat, you manage to get yourself back up. Two girls so, begin to just wail. And then I am the rest running of your there team... as quick as I can. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, James. Okay, so, literally in the middle of. Uh, who's, yeah, who's broken what? I can fix it. <laughs> Ghostbusters Incorporated, we're here. Va vacuum cleaner out. I start feeling terrible and I'm trying to comfort them, like sitting down, just like, hey, hey, it's okay, it's okay. Mixie, what did you do? Roll persuasion. Ghost! Mixie, roll persuasion. Yeah. Oh, damn it. Um, again, I'll give you a roll at least that much. <laughs> nice. Um, Kim, because she's a little older, manages to relax and calm down. But Ashley, because she's younger, continues to cry, and she gets consulted. And after mm, five minutes, she manages to calm down herself. And you just hear them sniveling. Yes? Mixie. What? We, we thought you were screaming, you numpty. I thought it was oh, no, no. You haven't heard her scream yet. Trust me, you don't want to. Sounds I thought like the ghost was screaming. Animal. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, God. What are you two oh, doing here, anyways? Screaming? Look, that was only three times, okay? Uh, three times? 
Kim says, um, nothing. I was just, uh, getting a late night snack, right, Ashley? Uh, yeah. Late night snack. Inside. <laughs> Inside. You're in a canteen. Yeah, uh, it's midnight. You can tell Ashley was actually getting a late night snack, but they're obviously oh, lying. Rose today. <laughs> <laughs> they're obviously lying. They wanted something more, but you're not exactly sure what. Why are you really? Um, uh, Kim, do you think it's okay? I guess. Uh, um, we were looking for spell components. They can be sometimes expensive. So we just thought the canteen would have some. Uh, she then shows you a pouch. They do have a lot, and I'm sure they won't miss some of it. Steal and slide. They're not very good liars, but even with a 14, you can tell that's the truth. <sighs> this is just sideway looking at Mixie. <laughs> stealing is wrong, children. Stealing is wrong. Yeah, stealing thing. is wrong. <laughs> Cough, cough. Do I need... Can I incite Mixie? <laughs> I don't think you need to. <sighs> uh, but they both uh, look dejected and then put some of the stuff back. However, Mixie, because you... Because of your background, you can tell they didn't put everything back. Oh no, I was going to say, can I try and pocket the stuff that they put back and give it back to them? Uh, sure. That's easy enough, and because they're kids, you don't really need to roll. They, uh, but for all intents and purposes, everyone else saw the children put the stuff back. Mixie pats them on the back and does a sleight of hand, quickly putting them back in their pockets. Both of them nod, and then begin to walk out. I assume you might know Mixie well enough to know what she's done. <laughs> and they are just walking through the wall? No, they're going around the area. Uh, okay, just checking. There's a door there. The... Yep. Yeah. Okay. The area itself, you can jump over it, but the way they're going, they're actually going through the door. Make sure you make sure you get home safe. <sighs> okay. One of them does say out loud, "Oh, hey, Alice," and then you hear a shh. Okay, fuck it. I'm, I'm dashing towards the door. I'm looking out of the door. You see the two kids leaving the area, but you don't see Alice or Millie anywhere. I, I pull out the bandor and I'm gonna look more intensified. You see them both straight towards the library looking building. Uh, really? <sighs> Mexi? Yeah. Turns around. Didn't you say you were gonna leave them off the premises? I didn't say anything. <sighs> well, they're still here. How, how would the boss think about us if something would happen to her? Hmm. She can hold her own pretty well. Not our problem right now. If she gets hurt, it is probably gonna be our problem. Doubtful. I'll look around. Besides, too. I wouldn't want to go against the pair of them. <sighs> that, get... that, that only shows cowardice. Sure. <laughs> now let let's Maybe go so, and fight. But at least I'd survive. Now let's go and find those evil ghosts that you do let escape. Without your manhood, and that was three. They're not evil. Well, they just head out of the window. You know they're not evil. Because they were learning. As you Are you sure? hurting anyone? Maybe you... it was an evil class. As you poke your head out of the window, you do see the three students uh, currently just relaxing in the garden. Okay, I'll jump out of the window. <laughs> okay. It's... Uh, this is the first floor, right? It's the first floor, yes. Okay. Yet. Wait, I will run over to the window to see what he's going after. 
He seems to be going straight towards the garden area. What is he heading directly to? <laughs> the three students currently uh, relaxing in the garden area. I am going to shout for them to run. <laughs> They begin... Even will increase his pace. One decides to stay because he respects an authority. One bolts <laughs> straight towards the library. And one bolts straight towards a building known as... Well, in common. And then in Draconic. Uh, the hangout spot. It's literally just called the hangout spot. Okay. Since I'm outside, do I see one of them going towards the library? You do. Can I look for stuff in the uh, <laughs> canteen? Yes, you easily find 50 uh, rations, some spell components that they didn't manage to pick up. Which in all honesty is pretty much useless to the rest of you. I'm just muttering to myself, is it morally wrong to steal from a school? Hmm. You say that as Nesmin starts making two sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> You say that after you just help kids kill, steal from the same school. It's their school, it's fine. You say that as I walk towards the library alone. <laughs> and, and I'm towards that one that is still sitting down because he respects no authority. But he shall respect mine! <laughs> okay. Uh, let's just work with Mixie and Nesbin first then. Mixie and Esmond, you begin to wander the area. Closely enough, you do find people, things, commodities. You do find stuff that would belong to them. Hang on, hang on. we find people? No, uh, people stuff. Oh, okay, because you had me confused. People, things. I was like, wait. <laughs> uh, people, things, as in people, stuff. Oh, I, get, I get you. I just misspoke. Uh... You do find some spell components worth the value of 50 gold, uh, 200 gold, and at max 500 gold. Pocketing them. Alright, <laughs> in total that'd be 750 gold total. Um, Does Nesmin see me do this? Nesmin is busy distracted making sandwiches. Okay, yeah. I'm making a set for me, a set for Mixie, a set for... Each of the kids as well. Wait a minute, how much? Their names. How Millie much and. Stuff would this be? As how it... much stuff would be taken once I take this? Um, it could all fit in your bag. It's not really that difficult to do so. Would it? Is it a noticeable amount that's been taken? No. Okay. I mean, unless it belonged to specifically to that person. It could have easily just been misplaced. Okay. Nesmin, you do find 50 sets of rations, uh, or you can create 50 sets of rations within the items here. I'm, I'm literally just creating sandwiches. All right, you get... Just out of whatever's left over here. Five sandwiches. Uh, five ration sandwiches. Hell yeah. They are Scooby-Doo sides, so about the half portion of your body. And this I'm just going to start munching on one, and I'm just going to turn around to Mixie, and with a mouthful, mm -hmm, and just extend a half to it. <laughs> you know, of all the things that you're scared of, I was really sure that Ghost was going to be one of them. <laughs> Don't talk with your mouth full. <sighs> <laughs> All right. Just wandering about and getting information, uh, you do find the sets of rations, the spell component value price, and you do find a few hints, uh, scribbled notes. It does appear to be a strange incantation for living 
breathing magic, but you're not exactly sure what that means. Unless one of you knows a bit of magic, you wouldn't be able to roll an arcana check. Magic, you say? <laughs> roll an arcana check. While they are written on napkins, you are able to discern that living magic contains souls incremented amounts, but it has to be binded within an area sectioned walls. Likely the building is one of these areas, or the classroom likely was. Removing the spirits from the said section would likely cause them to be rampant, or removing the uh, sigils themselves placed somewhere in the room would likely allow the spirits to finally leave. But you're not exactly sure why someone was doing this. You begin to um, go ahead and roll an insight check. You begin to wonder why, but it's possible that they're trying to use the remaining magical aura around this school for magicians and the like to perhaps enhance their own magical ability. It's possible that this person likely doesn't have too much to begin with. But this school is based to allow people to grow and develop into something greater. And it's possible that this person is trying to become this. Uh, I'm relaying the information to Mixie and saying that it might be best if we find these sigils and help the spirits move on and possibly figure out who's actually doing this and try and find a better way for them to learn. This is... Uh, there's learning and then there's this. Is it still studying the unknown? Oh. Do any of you have the background of entertaining entertainer or have any musical prowess? Uh, you, you're asking the bar yeah, sorry. Musical prowess. The bard usually has. Yes, but you're not there. Yep. Sorry. That would be it's there. only me and Mixy, but uh, I don't. Neither do I. All right. Then we will move over to the library first. You're better off doing him first. Yeah, oh, what the, what the fuck? Oh, Lord, I hope that's just the librarian. Entering to the area, you do see two people you know as uh, children you've protected in the past. A phantasmal image right in front of them as if they're bar barricading the creature in front of them. Because you do actually do speak the language of Primordial, you do hear what they're saying. Step back, kids. I'll protect you from whatever this thing is. And then he sees you and goes, What are you standing there for? Hurry up and save the kids. Get out of here before you die. You shed yourself, Phantom. Uh, Same Primordial. Leave, leave the living to the... Leave the the work to the living and just be. Roll persuasion uh, disadvantage. Yeah, uh, you know I'm 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 not good with talking to people, or am I? Mm. And why is it back to whisper? I have no idea. Uh, you rolled a fourteen though. No, it's staying there to protect the kids. You say you can see that its footing is strong and it's holding fast. It is not going anywhere. Go ahead and roll turn order. Neat. All right. Do, 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 do. Add turn. Add turn. Alice and Millie will be the same turn. Add turn. Ooh. Ah, this is this is how good old Archer dies, huh? That's a sixteen. That's a third. Oh. Nope, that's a 14. And... Oh, nice. That's a 17. Rip Archer.
Let's, <laughs> Let's go with Crisis. I can't... Was there... Did it say anything about a reverse function on the vacuum? Um, It's a standard vacuum, so... Yes, it does have one, but you don't know if it works. Okay. Starts flicking the button furiously, nothing happens. I flick my kick furiously into the wind and I prepare for combat. Opens the vacuum cleaner, empties the bag. One of the, the, the delinquent that you followed... <laughs> We're gonna need a bigger vacuum. <laughs> Grabs Melee and Alice and spiritually jumps them straight towards you. He lets them go and jumps straight back in a guarded position. The creature then dives straight for it as it is the closest thing and just buries its teeth and fangs. You see itself almost as if it forms its own corporeal form and just decimates the phantom. Alice and Millie, now that they're close enough, just bolt out the room. Go home. Uh, roll persuasion. Ooh. That's actually good. <sighs> they decide to go home. Maybe. Archer. Hopefully. Probably. Unless something happens, I... you see them going straight towards the gateway. Okay. So I Alright, so I'm gonna stand I'm gonna move myself over here. I'm gonna I'm gonna squint my, my eyes at this at this creature. And I'm It's your draw. I have my vacuum cleaner looking directly at him. I have my vacuum out. Once he gets into range, I will vacuum. I will vacuum. <laughs> that, that, that's pretty much my turn. The creature rushes towards you in a gastral form. As it moves close enough, you hear it say something in Undercommon. Do you speak it? Yes. It says this following message. The one that summoned me. The one that sleeps at night aims to destroy those brimming with life. Go ahead and roll your 3d6. Wait, I choose not to now, now that I have new information. Okay. Because you didn't take any action against it, it's still going to attack you. That's okay. Because I have a master plan on how not to get attacked at Dogma. And it all stemmed from me just not being in the spot I thought I was. For I am no longer here. At third level as a reaction, when you hit by an attack, you can teleport to an unoccupied space that you occupied since the start of your last turn. When the attack misses you, once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. You stand <laughs> by the door. <laughs> I was right here. Unfortunately, not as far back as I wish I would. Okay, because that would have hit you, and probably for a lot. Yeah. So, I'm going to say it under common. I wish you no harm, spirit. So, don't hurt me. We just need I just need to relocate you to a safe location. I need to find your master. Roll persuasion. I say this in under common, by the way. 18's pretty good, but I set the DC at 19, so you just missed. <laughs> Feels bad? Alright. So what I'm going to do with my action now is I'm going to use my movement to get over here, and then dash over here. Okay, instead of leaving the room, you decide to get even further in. Yeah. The I did do that. Creature then looks towards you and goes, The master needs more than just one. So might as well go for two for some more fun. He just left he just left you alone. Guess you were running too fast. Huh. Fuck. 
<laughs> I chased so, after him. So the two that are munching on food are nice. All right. No, he's, he's talking. He's talking about the children that just left. He's talking about the children that just left. Darn. Shit, me, dude. And we will go straight towards the garden before all this happened. Yay. I just need to move the map. 50,000. Why won't the map move? Um. Ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. Ignore Treasure it. room. Music room. Ah. Uh. I mean, music can be its treasure on its own. So I, I see see the ghost sitting at the at the thingy. Yes, you see the ghost just hanging out, um, just throwing pebbles in the pond. You also see uh, Archer heading straight towards the area that you saw Alice and Millie going to, so he can probably take care of that on his own. Sure. <sighs> There's you. He goes and looks towards you. Yeah, what you want? You want smokes? I have a few if you need them. <laughs> it's right. uh... You can tell that he does have smokes on him, but they probably won't work for you. I don't think the... the, the I don't think we're all that compatible if it's... For that kind of work. Sorry. What are you, my dad? Apparently, the ghost is talking in common. It is talking <sighs> in common. You just never spoke to it in a different language, so it just <laughs> never said anything. <sighs> no, I am not sure. Why am I talking with you? I am looking here for ghosts. The ones that eat people. Are you one of those ghosts? No, I'm just bound into this area. Even if you try to kill me, I'll just be brought back tomorrow. Man, please, if you're not one of them, please intrigue me. Where could I find the ones that are harming people here? Have you tried the music room or the library? I hear there's a big one there. Hmm. The li and the library? Yeah. Hmm. Something I changed guess. in the basement and apparently that woke it up. Or that got created when it woke up. I don't really know the details. Okay. Interesting. I I thank you for this information. Pulls out the vacuum cleaner. <sighs> Whatever, nerd. As he gets wiped out. And he will start running towards the library. As you run straight towards the library, you hear some screaming. <laughs> Get your ass back here! Running intensifies. Oops, I forgot to move <laughs> everyone to the map. Did you hear the little girl screaming or me screaming, get your ass back here? Probably both. <laughs> I think we got it in different. Mixi and Nesman, you seem to be just fine. Your group seems to be handling the rest of the situation. Maybe. <laughs> As you do see, Millie and Alice currently running straight towards the corridor. And then you also see something else running straight towards them. A massive skull. Hold, hold up, I made you some lunches. Uh, oh, what? Uh, uh, mi mi Mixie? Yeah. You, you see it too, yeah? Yeah. What is it? Do you think I can stop it? 
Oh, what is it? Buzzy, you I'm can... gonna stop peering from around, Mixie. Buzzy, you can make a Arcana check. Um, yeah, good question. What is this thing? You oh, do not please know. Please get higher. No, <laughs> uh, well, Mixie definitely doesn't know. It's a floating skull, so it might be magical. But you're not exactly sure what it is. But you do see Archer heading straight towards the creature. And you do see Aiman getting out of the <laughs> area and heading straight towards the conjoining section. Do we want to chase after it? Uh, not really, but I think we should. What happened to you wanting to learn about ghosts? It doesn't look like a ghost. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. It's floating! It's a skull, it's dead, it's probably it's a, a ghost. It's a skull. Yeah, it might be a skull ghost, whatever. I'll be right behind you. Uh-huh. He's afraid of skulls. Everyone roll a turn order. And to make this even more suspenseful, Millie and Alice, you don't see where they lie in the turn order. Gosh, sugar shit. Man, why is our initiative trash? Just be lower. Why is mine always the lowest? <laughs> All right. Can't find any spooky music. Hmm. This says Amber. I have a song you might like. In the halls of the Mountain King. Spooky, There's scary, spooky scary skeleton. <laughs> Bring shivers down your spine. This, this video has now gotten the copyright strike. Eamon, you're up first. Hmm, what range am I at? You know what, Eamon, Eamon is, is, puts away the vacuum cleaner and pulls out the Pandor. And now I need to, I need to double check. Because spells are yay. Uh, yep, uh, I am gonna cast Phantasmal Force on the, on the skull. If I am in range, if not, I will move into range. I am in range, so it needs to make an intelligent saving throw. And. And if it fails, then it believes it's 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 getting sucked into one of the vacuum cleaners. Interesting. Uh, intelligence, right? Yep. All right. As you begin to see the creature, shape and form, look towards you, and then it begins to be drawn towards you. You do hear something in Undercommon, but I doubt you speak it. I do not speak it. Uh, Archer's too far away to understand what it's saying. Uh, Mixie and Esmond, do you speak Undercommon? Nope. Nope. Speak giant. <laughs> Come on, guys, this is some useful language. <laughs> I can keep carrying the tea. The creature begins still thinking that it's being drawn towards it. Takes his movement straight towards Eamon. And because it's now in proximity range, it can take 3d6. It can now take 3d6. Yay! Um. You see that the thing is being drawn into it, 
but even with 15 points of automatic damage, it barely makes a crack. Oh. It then draws straight towards you and tries to bite your hand, saying something first, which you do not know. Does an 18 hit? I... Yes, that hits. Alright, that is 3d6. Uh oh, 7. Plus its strength modifier of 2, so a total of 9. 9, so. Let's see. Constitution saving throw. Because I believe that is concentration. Yep, mm -hmm. that is concentration. Rep me. Come on. Be higher than a 10. Or not. Well, he, he does no longer believe I'm sucking. Except that I now do with the vacuum cleaner, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, um, now he knows. It now knows that beforehand it wasn't being sucked and drawn in. Now it knows that it is. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> You're still level 4. Yes. The two girls then now take their turn. And bolt into two separate buildings. Why can't they not just leave this place? Because they're scared, panicked children. Fucking children. Nesbitt. All right. Uh. Does Eamon look hurt? Eamon, Eamon look looks hurt? injured, and now the flying skull seems to be drawn towards him. Very angry looking. Yeah, I'm not feeling all that happy. Does anyone understand what it says? Archer's too far away. But you do, uh, Archer, you do hear Nesbin just yell that out. Too far, it's whispering. Hurry up, get over here! And I'm casting Zone of Truth on top of it. You can tell it worked, but you can't tell the language it's speaking in. <laughs> Anything else? I'll just be my turn. I'll just, I'll just say, ask any question you can think of. It has to answer truthfully. Archer. Oh, that's Is your... Alright. As you begin to vacuum the creature, the thing... Uh, Mixie, you do see that it's beginning to crack further. And you can probably take an initial attack as the vacuum, which I forgot to say, is a bonus action. Oh, so I can do two attacks, so... Yes. Oh. Yeah, I have been bonus bonus actioning each turn, so. Thank you. Cool. I thought you were gonna use your attack, but no, you just uh, did it again. All right. Another twelve. You can see more cracks beginning to form around the bone, and it says something which you do not know what it said, but it probably yelled some sort of profanity at you. <laughs> Archer. Okay. Let me use my movement to get over here. Um, I'm using my bonus action to go red now. Wait, or was I already red? I need to scroll up. Was I was I already red? Uh, I sure. think so. Yeah, I was already red. Okay. Oh, excuse me. All right, so I use my action, and I snap my fingers. I need you to make a con save. I think maybe, probably. Uh mm hmm. Oh. So you know, half damage. All right, a combustion forms around the creature's left side of the skull. 
is it's being drawn in by two vacuum cleaners or Ghostbusters as it's literally called on the side of the vacuum uh, written in actual handwriting you can tell that it's Ramones uh, Archer then hits it with a combustion of fire but the force is pushed into it but the flames don't touch its skull but you can see that the skull has drawn its eye straight towards you and are you at least 30 feet from it? Nope. You still can't oh, hear yeah, what forgot, it says. I forgot to, forgot to ask. Also, it feels bad. You can speak with it once you're 30 feet <sighs> next to it. I mean, when he was in the library, he was speaking in a hushed tone. Amen. Ah. <sighs> As men, I have no clue what you just did, but it ain't helping. You have to roll a charisma save. What? You're in the radius. You have to roll Christmas save. Okay. Christmas save. There you go. Have it. Yeah, you pass. I mean, if he passed or not, you can tell that he meant the words he said. <laughs> yep. Man, I'm just gonna keep vacuuming, vacuuming for... All right. Vacuuming. You can see that a sizable crack has formed around the head of its... Not the head, the forehead of its frame. Okay. And you said we could do this twice, right? Right. Once it's a bonus action, the second time is your action. Okay, yep. That's fine. All right. And I'm going to move to here. Just for reasons. The creature looks towards you, Archer, as it drew its you drew its ire. Then its eye moves straight towards you. It leans towards your area. And then its eye throws out a concussive blast of strange red orbs straight at you. Go ahead and oh, roll yeah. dexterity saving throw. That's the other thing I'm supposed to be good at. Wrong archer? Archer, not Eamon. <laughs> it's a good thing it wasn't Eamon. Yeah, it's a good thing it wasn't me. Archer, you pass, but you still take half damage. Which is 5d6. Plus its charisma modifier of negative 2. You take Tough. 10 points of damage. A kind. Uh, technically fire. Technically I'm resistant. Nice. Uh, you take five points of damage then. A concussive blast aims straight... Oh no wait, you saved, so you take nothing. A concussive blast aims straight towards you, and then your aura begins to envelop it, and then wash it away. Man, that could have been trouble. Nice one. Uh, I will just wait my turn to see what anyone asks it and learns from it. Mixing. Ah, uh, same thing again. Because it definitely now because it attacked Archer. Archer did a sweet flip there. Oh, damn. <laughs> Welcome to the area of low rolls. You do see the forehead of its area, and the bottom uh, section of the forehead still, so the top right jaw, forms a crack around that line. Archer. Okay. I'm going to move over here. And I'm gonna say to I'm gonna say to it in undercommon. Where is your master? My master sleeps under the night. Where it falls, no light is bright. And where you'll go, in the dead of night, in tomb in way, in a sound so delight. 
No riddle. I, I take my action to start flexibly dodging. <laughs> uh, you can go ahead and roll an insight check. To try okay. to determine what it means. Something having to do with uh, no matter what light won't reach the area. And then something having to do with pretty sounds. Out of character, I know what it is, but this character doesn't know about that. Yeah, so feels bad. I mean, you can to just the music room. You can just say the what it said, and everyone else can just want an insight on their turn. Yeah, sure. In in common, I'll say. It. Archer says the riddle. Uh, Archer, do you do anything else? Oh yeah, I use my action to start dodging. Okay, Eamon. Hmm. It's still better to me, because vacuum... Yes, right? Yes. Okay, I'm, oh, I'm just gonna vacuum twice. Because why make it difficult? The creatures crack along its jawline, then begins to form into a bigger section, almost as if it's the fissure itself. It is close to cracking, and when one physical attack or one way to blow up a skull, it is possible to bring it down. And Eamon is gonna move is gonna move over to Mexi. He's gonna yell, We gotta cross the street Sorry. <laughs> I got the copyright. <laughs> <laughs> and that will be my it looks towards you and Mixie and Nesmin close enough. It ignores Archer. Even though it's the only one capable of understanding its language. It looks towards you three and states. Three asunder will go under. In the ground, my master will be found. Go ahead and roll a dexterity saving throw. All of us. Yeah. Everyone but Archer. Crap. Crap. And Mixie as well. Uh, on a side note, I don't think Mixie used that. Uh... It has nothing to do. It, it's not going to stop what's happening right now. But Mixie never used that uh, that bar against Ray. Or that held action. So before it takes yeah, his attack, you can uh, vacuum it. The attack will still land, but you can do some damage. Nice. Oh, so close. You see the form begin to shatter in its wake. But with one hit point left, it makes the attack. Minus two. Man, you guys so lucked out. Uh, you take a total of 12 hit points. <coughs> Just realized my Arcana check earlier should have been a 14. You still didn't pass. Damn. You got to do those. Oh, Lord. You guys forgot to do those. It's like tech for. The red it, hasn't, it hasn't been our turn yet. It's been two it's of been, you. It's been, it's been Eamon's turn. It ha it's only been Eamon's turn and so the monster's turn. Mine. Now it's my turn. Roll Have insight. I been now I'll insight. Something about pretty music, the basement, uh, probably some area inside the m music room. Either that or a very strange room with musical instruments as well. But based off of the information, there's likely an underground passage within the music room. But as that is said, Eamon does appear to be glowing. Even... <coughs> glowing? Yes. 
I'm glowing. Okay. He's weird. I am. Um, Stephen over here. And curing wounds on myself. All right. Mixy. I am going to be vacuuming again. <laughs> How do you want to take down this creature with a vacuum? Across the streams. Did you say that in character? Yeah, I did say that in character. Okay, then she's sidestepping away from me. And then doing... <laughs> she's pissed off already. <laughs> to the uh, monster. Moving to the side, you just rake half of its skull asunder. Entering into the vacuum, it says something that makes you wonder. Wait, why am I rhyming this? Uh, <laughs> it stops rhyming because it no longer needs to, because it's dying. And it states, <laughs> It doesn't matter what you do now. My mark has already been etched into the walls. Unless you get rid of that, my friends will find you all. Wait, why am I rhyming? I'm already dying. I'll see you tonight. Well, that was the end of that fight. Oh, you better sleep I rhymed tight. <clears throat> Eamon disappears. Uh, it, it appears Eamon has been hit with a bit of fright. He completely glows <laughs> and then just disappears. Would you say he doesn't feel so good, Mr. Stark? And now you make no money off any of your videos. <laughs> Mixy, they're swearing in school. Oh, wait, what is it? Entering into the area, you, you know... do... Go ahead. I was about to say, you know you fighting ghosts is a lot less exciting when you're basically fuck them up. We're not here for fun. We're not. This is, this is a job. Also, Archer flips this flips a switch on his vacuum and starts um unvacuuming a ghost. Nothing comes out. Oh, feels bad. It'll be back. It said it'll be back. The vacuum does blow out air. In, t in a quantitative amount, it almost pushes Mixie off of her feet. But other than that, no phantoms appear out of nowhere. Alright, I flipped this way. Back to... It said that it, that it had runes in the library. So I'm guessing we should probably get rid of Yeah, I would say that would be a good idea. What's the time looking like, by the way? The time is reaching... Uh, you would have been here for a few hours investigating the area. So perhaps 3 a.m. in the morning. We should probably hurry up because uh, it, it's going to get bright. So we should skip the clearing of that area and go straight down into the music room or whatever, whatever the riddle said. Are we just gonna ignore the fact that one of us has just disappeared? I suspect he's with its, its master, which is wherever it it, it disappeared. Instead, it'll, it'll, it's been talking about its master for a while. Uh, I mean, we should probably deal with the runes in the library first, and then, I mean, how slow can it be? Uh, 
Well, the reason why I say we should probably go figure out where Amon is, wherever its master is, because Amon might end up dying and turning into another one of them. <laughs> and that sounds like a deduction to pay if he. I mean, I won't tell if you are. Employee, he, he shows up every morning at the at the right time. He's what you would call a model employee. If he doesn't show up one day, questions. Oh, no, my jobs. Been, my jobs aren't like this, so. I'm just gonna fucking go to the library. <laughs> I'm gonna go try to figure out that riddle. That's the name of the library's at. It's over here. Alright. Archer heads uh, to a location similar to the music room. Mixie heads towards the library. And Nesmond, where do you go? I'll have to go with Mixie. Alright. And as I'm going, I'm casting that on her. And I'm just going to renew it every hour. Good to know. You can only cast it once, Rex. No. no. It lasts for an hour or until I use it again. Oh, okay. Trex are clarity. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, I'm going to Eamon, you don't know where you are, but you are in an area riddled with ghosts. You only see two in front of you, but you definitely hear voices surrounding you. You see a strange bartender in front of you, and simply enough, he states, <laughs> A new soul. So, anything you'd want to drink before you go? What is the largest drink you've got? <laughs> Just name something and we'll give it to you. But if you want large, we can fill up this casket. Okay, hey, if I'm going to die, I better drink myself to death. As we end the session mm. for tonight. That was a short set. Was it? Uh, what? That was too. Don't we normally go on until like seven thirty for us to like another? <laughs> I mean, no, we it... usually stop at two thirty. Can... Oh, you guys have had daylight saving. Yep. Yeah, yep. We still haven't. We, but we start an hour later, right? No, we started or on time. Earlier. But I month. swear, normally we do finish like an hour later. Because I'm normally still up at like 7.30 for this game. We can continue on. It's up to you. Yeah, I, I can continue. I I'm have fine to... continuing if you guys are. I, I still have five hours. Dropkick. So I, I can. Mixie. Earl? Zio? Mom? Sounds like they're already asleep. La... 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 Zayas, I he she can, and and Earl doesn't sleep. You know that. Okay, my Ru insomnia does not last. Ruining my ending. We continue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it feels bad. It sounds like you're gonna have to make a jump cut right there. Don't... <laughs> nah, it's fine. Uh, no, he's already stopped the recording. So he's... I actually didn't. Ah. Feels, feels bad. He was doing his outro. We, we could interrupt. <laughs> Don't worry about it. That is us. Where is, where is it? As you begin yeah. to drink from a casket about the size of your body, eerily enough, the strange creature looks towards you and goes, So, where are you from, friend? <sighs> I am from the Great Tree. Have you ever heard of it? You then see another spirit form out of nowhere. Yeah, I've heard of it. The Great Tree, huh? So your friend with those elves and drow. 
That's rather disturbing. Y you're saying friends? No. Fuck those bastards. He, he points towards his ears. I may share some blood with them, but they are not my friends. <laughs> True enough. Another phantom appears out of nowhere. I share some blood with the angels and they condemned my soul looks like we have something in common <sighs> so if I may ask why am I here <laughs> you hear the bard turn to the laugh <laughs> do you want to give him the bad news or should we and then another form appears out of nowhere Basically, you're here because the school decided to put you into a safe area as you were almost near death. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. you were brought into the canteen area where some ghosts just like to not be interrupted while they drink. Uh, well, don't let me interrupt. Then, I guess. You already have. So now we play a game. Okay, call me in three. The bartender then approaches you face to face. The rules are simple. It is one question, one answer. You tell a lie, we get your soul. Sure. He simply then states, Who are you? I am Amon. Nice to meet you. Then stating, Why are you here? Because the school system sent me here because I was nearly dying. Go ahead and roll deception check. What? That, that is literally what they just told me why I'm here. So technically it is right. That is lying through misinterpretation. <laughs> or do you mean why am I in school premises? Yes. Maybe you should ask your questions clear. Something may happen that you would call a lie. You see the tiefling ASMR then state, Stop being a dick and answer. I am a dick. Sorry. I am here because there have been reports of kids getting injured by ghosts. So, me and my friends were sent here to take care of hostile beings on the school grounds after midnight. They all laugh in unison and the one next to you then states <laughs> No spirit folk would harm a living creature without cause. So unless someone decided to harm us we would not retaliate without remorse. And I would like to ask what that flying skull was uh, that came out of the library. They all look at you as if they have no idea what you're talking about. And I also heard something living in the music. They Can all you please tell me what that is that? Do look at you in an earnest. And then the bartender states... That is a place no one dare go. It has been condemned due to the living soul that is both dead and alive that resides there. So there's something living there in the state of undead? Unless someone was foolish enough to wake it, the school would be fine. I, I am going to make an assumption here. That it has been a war. Seeing as it 
brought in its own friends. It likely has the shard that it was hidden away long ago. So then, one final question. Do you want to stay, or do you want to go? Again, with the question that is not completely earnest in itself. Then I will put it Where? justly. Do you want to stay until night goes away? And then you'll be brought back alive in the living day. Or would you stay the night wandering the streets and be attacked in corner to corner and your life will truly be bleak? We're ghosts. We rhyme. Get used to it. I would prefer to leave because my friends are out there still still trying to solve the problem that we have found ourselves. But I, I am under the assumption that the thing you said after and in a state of death, which I am not interested in just yet. A bit too young for that, my friend. Then good luck to you. So what? Go through that door, and may you find your friends on this plane, and no more. Or you can Thank hang you. out here and drink some more. It's up to you. But you may go in peace. I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm gonna stay there for an hour, empty my drink, and take a short rest. All right. If you don't mind, Dogma. That's fine. They were literally <laughs> staying. Do you want to go or and, and potentially be dead? Or do you want to stay there and have a safe haven until the morning light? I'll take a breather. Then I'll be on, my road, on the roads. Yeah, that's fine. Do, 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 do. Mixie and Nesman, you enter into the area of the lab. Not lab. Sorry, you didn't go to that section. You enter into the library. So many books. I'm looking around for anything that seems out of place in my life. Alright. Examining the area, you do see some things tossed and burned. Likely through attacks that Archer and the creature were fighting with. Go ahead and roll investigation checks. It should be a 12. <laughs> can I roll Not that it makes much of a change? You can. What is it? 1d4. No, 1d6 at your level. 1d6. Well. Investigating the area, you do see these books just lying on the ground. Other than that, though, the area seems clean enough. Can I look through the books to see if anything stops? You do see some nice tomes, books, uh, those in par or far greater than the books Nesman usually carries. All written in different languages, common and undercommon, abyssal, you think, undercommon, and the like. But without any knowledge of arcane magic, you wouldn't really understand them. Nesmith. I'll look up from whatever book I've decided to hold. Yeah. Can I go in for a sec? Hmm. I'll put the book back and I'll head over. As Nesmin puts back the book, everyone poops. You head over to look at the book. So. 
Uh, what do you need? Uh, can you read any of these books? Um, I can try. Uh, I'm gonna start looking through the books and see if anything stands out. There are three books that you have language proficiencies in, and the rest are written in different languages, but they are magically enchanted. So, what language do you know? Pick three that you know. If you don't have three, then pick what you know. Giant. <laughs> That's the only other language I know. Then you have a book in common and a book in Giant. But because you know magic, you are able to actually decipher what they mean. The common one simply states, So, you want to summon phantoms and the like into this mortal plane. An intro's guide into necromancy and the like. Written and published by, and then the name seems to be etched out. And the other one in Giant seems to read, Big rocks not enough? Try going for big spooky things. An intro's guide into raising the dead. You begin to read through the books, and it does appear to all be pertaining to the same subjects. And these are the books that will burn. Hmm. Do you put the books away, continue to read through them, trying to look for more? I want to look through the other books in the pile to see if there's any, like, diagrams or anything in them. Okay. I could link them to ghosts or necromancy. Based off the third, first two books, more than likely, even if you don't understand these, you can picture things together here and there. Uh, as you move the books, go ahead and roll a perception check. As you continue to move the books, trying to find a linking connection, you do see a strange symbol on the ground. You begin to move the books more and more, and you see this right underneath. A strange circle with symbols etched into the ground itself, right underneath the books. Can I arcana check it? Sure. 14, then. You can tell that the books we're covering this to hide it. Other than that, you do know that some of the symbols do reside in the first two books you picked up. Examining the other books, they do seem to be etched in with other things. But Mixie, go ahead and roll an insight check. As you see, this is engraved into the ground. Based on f how they engraved it, you can tell that it was a serrated blade, an edge to it. Not just a simple pick and tool, or a hammer. It was a weapon. Something similar to a dagger, but something far more refined. And with a groove. So whatever was doing this, you can see that there's a speck of blood. Just hinted at, in each marking. Ha <sighs> I may have an idea of how we can get rid of this. I don't know if it'll work. It's worked on other things I've done. Should I try it? A little bit of magic here, a little bit of magic. A little bit of magic everywhere. You know, just fixing things. I mean... This looks... Like some sort of ritual or something. Is it safe to touch it? Is anything we do safe right now? I mean, we did both see the same thing that was outside. Yeah. Oh god, the kids ran away. Oh, we forgot about the kids. Oh, we should probably try and find them after this. Probably run home. 
I hope so. As we move over to Archer. Yes, you! You managed to find the school music building, but it does seem to be cobwebbed and the door does seem to be locked. Sort of, as the lock itself does seem to be relatively new. Hmm. Don't. First roll of Popo's training, don't break his stuff. So... Are there like windows? No. It seems to be boarded up, and even then, it does seem to be even encased in stone. Hmm. Okay. I try to remove the cobweb. You remove the cobwebs e easily enough, but the door still remains there. Hmm. I don't have thief tools, but I will try to use my my vacuum cleaner. You remove more of the cobwebs. On the lock specific. Okay. Begin to see the lock slowly compressing into itself, but because it is made out of metal, it will take maybe an hour to completely disintegrate. Okay, so I'm just going to be do doing this for the uh, foreseeable hour then. <laughs> okay. Um, so an hour later, Mixie and Nesmin figure out what to do more than likely. You can tell that the sigil does appear to be inscribed and etched into the ground. But if you're able to remove the ground itself or make the letters illegible, it's possible to just uh, rake the area away with enough damage. Will that work? Ooh, that's true. You can also just heal the area itself. Yes, it would. But it would take like an that, hour to do. That was my plan. <laughs> ah, nice timing then. After an hour passes, each of you can take a short rest while you were doing this. But Archer, you managed to break the lock, and you're able to enter inside. Ah, the good suck works then. Inside, you see... So did that count as a... Go ahead. Did, uh, did the good suck count as a good... As a, sh as a short rest? <laughs> Yeah, you had nothing to do, so you were just eating some sandwiches that Nesmin threw at you. Ah, uh, good. Nice and... Okay, so it's two hit dice. So this is probably the time that I'm gonna take a step out of my bar with another keg of ale. <laughs> you, are one in, you are in one of the north buildings. He is right. He is. Okay. So that is not a tomb. That is some sort of music. It appears to be a long stringed instrument. But oh, sweet, a basket. No. And bagpipes? You know, I'm actually pretty. With my void powers, I'm actually really bad at playing wind wind. Wind. <laughs> yes, he would be. Okay. I'm just gonna do a general like scan investigation of the room to see like secret doors, you know. Go ahead and roll. Uh, investigation. Investigating the area, you do see a bookcase. You do see instruments, a piano, a strange, large, glowing rock in the middle of a skull shield. Uh, this chest, the bagpipes, this oddly placed uh, rug, and some scrolls in the back. Hmm. I draw. Any card. Any card. All I heard is you draw. Yeah, I draw. From the day of many takes that he had. Oh, okay. Go ahead and roll a d20. Because why not? That's 
Draw and, one, here we go. And again, you don't know what you actually have. I just know I drew a card and I got a bastard sword, so I'm drawing. <laughs> 18. As you draw the card, your bastard sword disintegrates from the side of your hip. And I didn't have it on me. He, he doesn't have it on him. <laughs> it, it's at the... Hmm... Ramon was checking it in, so I could just imagine Ramon's in inspecting it. It disintegrates while he's inspecting it. It's like, oh shit, what do I tell them? <laughs> what do I tell Archer? He entrusted this, to be with this with me. In section 9, Ramon's currently placing it into the instrumental item. He goes, alright, that should take care of it. Just need to place it in. Wait, what's going on? Why are you disintegrating? Oh god, what do I tell them? What do I tell them? Uh, then going back to here. You then see a strange item mirror, mirror its image and begins to glow out of the card you drew. You drew the card that appears to be a chef with a ladle in one hand, a rolling pin in the other, marked with an X in front of his body. Go ahead and roll a D4. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Dad's gonna fucking spoon. Spoons are pretty overpowered when they're put in the right hands. <laughs> Out of nowhere, the ladle emerges from the card, and then the card uh, gets shuffled into the deck. You now have a ladle. But there appears to be something inside the actual cup area itself. I look inside the cup of the ladle. It appears to be a strange red liquid. You're not really sure what it is. I say I would say I smell it, but I don't breathe, so I guess I can't smell things. <laughs> okay, I just I guess I'm just holding onto this ladle in with the with the strange red liquid inside. Um, I'm going to cast Mage Hand and move this rug. It, it's it's weird. It should be slightly to the right. Okay. You move it slightly to the right. Oops. To the right. Ah, dang it. Now there's a it's just covering a hole. I'm going to move it all the way over here now. It's in my... Oh, God. Put it back. <laughs> the hell is that? That fish. Alright, so... I'm going to move it this way now. So it still covers the face, but still lets me look inside. Perfect. Oh, good. Just... It's, getting, it's, get, it's getting a little sneak peek. Okay. I'm gonna look outside. Wait, no. I am on the search for Amon. I'm a good friend. I'm gonna look down in this cobweb field. As you look inside, go ahead and roll a dexterity saving throw. Is that a letter? <laughs> um, yeah, technically. You first grab the letter. It does appear to be a strange symbol. It is actually a mus musical symbol itself. You're not really sure what it is because you have no background in entertainer. Is that a quarter? Mm, technically, yes. <laughs> I just need to find the token I'm looking for because I forgot to pair this part of the map. So I'm just... Nah, I don't worry about it. Man, Arch... Uh, Earl, you're on you're on streak today. You're finding every big... I thought For you would some all... reason. I thought you would all be here. But because you... <laughs> we all had different prerogatives. Me, I was going to save Amen so I didn't get a pay reduction, and they wanted to clean up. Uh... They, they, they want to rob the school. Ah, forget it. I'll just go with a level, a level four nah, CR. Give, give, give me the give me the intended target. Yeah, give, I want I want to go all out. Yeah, he, he, remember he wants to die. I don't want to die. Archer has plans on plans. He has but, that. He has that wish. No, I since if we fucked up Dogma, I want you to give me the worst that can possibly happen. Oh, that you probably plan. Oh boy. Just oh, give him... oh, 
Just give him the hard punch, my dog man. <laughs> All right, just give me a second. <laughs> <I'm> gonna... <laughs> because I accidentally deleted the harder token, so now I have to go look for it. Yeah, control. No, there was more than one. Oh, Lord. That had it multiple times. Our good suck, it's your time. <laughs> Rip over dreams. I'm just gonna, I should have kept the bat. I'm just going to bring in one. It's fine. Suddenly, a strange creature out of nowhere bites straight for your neck. It binds... Oh, I remember this creature. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. But this one's different. You see that it's a corporeal form, a strange, almost haunting figure. It bites into your neck. And you take 1d4 plus 5. 28 damage. Yeah, that's fine. As um... it burrows into your flesh. And then let's go. It crawls out. So so glass. It does say something so... in Sylvan, though. Damn it, the one language I didn't have. Oh, so close. Two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> yeah. The language is rough. It looks towards you and says, See nahi. Eh. Go ahead and roll yeah, deception. <laughs> it is ready to charge and attack you. Oh lord. <laughs> You're saying that after you already <laughs> See the guys are ready to fight. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Now that I'm finally alone, I am now super fast. I'm now super fast. The one time oh, you boy. actually rolled higher than the enemy. Than the entire group of people involved, you mean? That's true. It's not um, that hard. There's only two of you. Go You'd ahead. be surprised. Go ahead and go. I, sp I splash him with my ladle juice. <laughs> ladle juice. That sounds so kinky. <laughs> Splash me with your ladle juice, daddy. Splash it on me! Is there oh, anywhere Lord. you're aiming? Him? His teeth. Specifically his teeth. Hopefully this is Listerine. You aim straight for its teeth. It begins to burn and singe. And then knits flesh back to flesh. As its corporeal form turns into a more physical... Visceral... And corporeal, not corporeal, and fleshed out form. Its teeth, its jaw, begins to re knit into actual breathing flesh. Oh, look, you're a real boy now, Pinocchio. Bonus action, give it the good. <laughs> the good... <laughs> what the fuck is this? It does suck. It takes damage. But you can tell that it's even less than it was before, as half of, as a part of its body is now in a true state. You just help. Good job. I don't know. I don't know what the splooge was. Was now you know. The creature uh. rushes towards you, and with its newfound jaw, bites with a seventeen. All right, I will spend one point and add a, let's go, yeah, let's just go with that. It doesn't really matter what it actually is, so that's 2d6 then. You get hit with a total of 13 damage. Nah, I got this. And if you and you feel breath. that if you attacked anything else beside itself, you would likely have disadvantage on that. Oh. Your move. 
interact. Okay, so what kind of action? All right, no, it's probably an interaction. Okay, interaction. I take out a sandwich and throw it at it. <laughs> yep. Specifically, it's. Um. Okay. It hits the mouth and just falls off. It then says something. Dunama and a In primordial, I'll say. Primordial. It just turns its head straight at you. Almost in a crunching like tone as its head goes all the way around and goes back to its actual state. Uh, uh, so back to being incorporeal? No. Basically, its head did a complete 360. It did an owl look at you. Ah. Uh, okay. Do I have any more splooge? You can tell that there is some more red juice inside the ladle. I splash myself with. All right, you gain back a bit of your flesh and two d four plus four. Oh wait, what am I doing? You can roll. Yeah, so you can roll the double one, Earl. I have faith in you. All right. Plus half, four, right? you take, you regain nine points of damage. So I'm guessing that was my, like, bonus action to do that? Yes. Okay. I'm going to move here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then back here, but then over here. <laughs> that is my... Looks towards you. You don't understand a word it says. And then shouts with a loud, piercing cry. <sighs> and then you see another being come out of the woodwork. However, this one is a phantasmal form. It crawls out as if a nightmare crawls out of your mind, soul, and body. And both bite straight towards your arms. Does a 16 and a 17 hit? Yeah, they. Alright, they aren't. Uh, but unfortunately, I am no longer. Because I took a short rest. So I'm back here. Okay. You still have one of the attacks, though. That's okay. I'll just say this guy hits you. Do, do, do. So you only take 1d6 plus 5. You take 11 points of damage. I've just realized something I could totally do now. Uh, Leave? That's, that's, that's too much of a simple answer. A dogma, I choose to use a power in which I did not believe I'd use in a long time. Uh-oh. Telepathy. <laughs> so, uh, it doesn't need to understand the language to know what, uh, to understand my telepathic message. And I'll say to it, Yeah, man. <laughs> what was that? Hey, man. That's what I thought. I, I, I ain't trying to fuck. It looks towards you and simply states, The one that brought us back dictates what we do. So unfortunately for you... And that's all it says. Rip. Can I figure out how to arrive do with some... All I can think of is poo. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> So you best go have a poo. So now you'll turn into... Is telepathy in action? Mm, nope. It's, it's just something like you fool. That was, a, that was a push. A little bit. Okay, so what I shall now do... I shall now... Use a special magical power called disengage. <laughs> disengage. 
I shall use the magic of disengage to disengage from my enemies while they do not see me. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is bonus action turn. I'm going to be pink for a while. All right. Uh, what's your passive perception? Terrible. Thirteen. All right. As your form begins to glow around you, and you begin to run away, much like Eamon did, you disappear. The last step will be drawn out by Mixie and Nesmin as you both begin to break out the mending causing the bindings to finally break you feel that the creature is no longer tethered to this plane you know that one of your own is heading towards the music room and the other well, might already be there. Are you sure the children would have left? They didn't seem to listen the first time. I mean... Kind of ran out of school. So. Did you see them head out the gate? Because I saw them head towards it, but... The wood doors off to the side, weren't there? I mean, they were getting chased. I think they would have got the message by that. No, I hope so. Right, um... Do you have any idea of where a music room would be in the school? Oh. So, I suppose we just wander around and stop off at any, uh, any interesting looking rooms on the way, nothing in particular, just some crafting odd rooms, you know, to check them out for more of these runes and try and find the music room. I mean, I don't know if you know, this seems to be a very uh, kind of expensive school, so don't don't want anything to go missing, you know. We're not here to steal. Hey, we're also not here to fucking check out the lab. I, I may have made food, but you're not here to. At the same time, we're not here to check out the labs, and it's also not stopping you. Why are you saying hey to me? Well, I'm already talking to you. I'm not saying hey to you. Yeah, okay, ignore me, whatever. You know that classical turn around and just look really scared? Like the zoom in anime face on this is gonna do. Would I would Did I see? Because technically, I'm looking in that direction. Um. Yeah, you would have seen it. You would have seen the red hood right behind Nesmin, but you wouldn't have been able to see the face. Uh, don't turn around. There's someone behind me, isn't there? Yeah. Mike, are you friendly? If you're looking for the music room, I can show you, but for a price. You simply have to find my mark and burn it away. Oh, I thought you were about to ask for a soul then, and I was about to say no can do, but you know. Is it safe to turn around? Yeah, it's safe to turn around. I, I mean, I'm staring at them, so... I'm gonna walk forwards, and then I'm gonna turn around once I'm behind Mixie. <laughs> As you do so, you see a halfling white hair, red piercing, bloodshot eyes in a red hood simply looking at you and goes 
you can find it in the music room too. So it's a win-win. So, are you coming? Or are you staying here? Do I... Do I recognize her? You may roll a history check. Oh, I just realized I have a 21 passive. <laughs> Good job. You can tell that there's someone familiar to you. You're not sure why, but it's something in your past. Something definitely haunting you, but you're not sure what it is. Not yet. If you decide to follow it or not, it is up to you. But one thing is certain. It will lead you down a road. To your doom... Or to your hope, there's only one way to know, as we end the session for tonight. 